Good morning, my lovelies, and happy, happy Friday from here in Loveland, Colorado, where it's not showing me the temperature right now, but I think it's in the 30s and a little bit chilly, so I'm a little bundled up in my studio this morning. Got a nice big cup of warm water here. Already had my coffee this morning, and Again, like yesterday, it feels like my head is feeling kind of swirly around my book. And there's been a lot of behind the scenes work and progress. And what I want to share with you today, and you're like, what book? Because you've never stopped by my channel before. Well, welcome. Let's back up and start there. Hi, I'm Dr. Manette Riordan. Hey, Tori, glad to have you here live, my beautiful friend. I'm Dr. Minette Riard, and this is Painting in Your PJs live with Minette. Hey, Susan, welcome. Good morning. And good morning, good morning, Yvonne, Bonnie, great to see you here. So Fridays through May, hi, Cindy, are going to be all about my 100-day project. And the 100-day project, if you're not familiar, it started officially on February 18th, but you could do the 100-day project anytime. And the 100-day project is the idea of simply committing to doing something creative every single day for 100 days. There's a few secrets that I learned along the way to make it go a little faster, a little better. Hey, Carol. Hey, Barbara. And that's batch creating content. And what I mean by that is like last year, I did 100 days of animals on uh, postcards, on four by six postcards. Well, some days I would paint 10 backgrounds and then I would have the backgrounds ready. So each day all I had to do was my animals. It could be one painting that you work on for 100 days for five minutes a day. So there's no restriction uh, on what it can look like. And the key to success I have found is chunking it down into different stages and steps because it has to stay interesting because if it's if I get bored, I'm out, right? And so I have to keep it innovated and new. Well, this year I feel like I've taken on a project that might be a little bit daunting and uh, we're going to see how we go along. And then I remembered that so much of the process of what I'm creating is behind the scenes. It's not the the pretty parts. It's the writing and the brainstorming and the ideating. And I just bought some books to do a little more research. So my 100-day project is to write and draw a book. This, is, this will be my fourth published book. And the others were easy to write. It was content I was very familiar with and they just kind of flowed and there were a lot of words. Hi, Becky. And um, I have been sitting on the idea of this book for a few years. And I even knew a couple of years ago when I was working with one of my mentors that I had to art my way through this book, but I still didn't have my mind wrapped around what that was going to look like. And then a little bit earlier this year, it just kind of all came clear. And I knew it would, but I was feeling really impatient. So I am using the 100 Day Project to start drafting illustrations, to practice sketch noting and mind mapping. I, yeah, Bonnie, that's a great question. So Bonnie's asking if all the extra stuff is included in the 100 day project, getting it set up, doing the scout work. Yeah, I think it's all part of it. Now, a lot of people did some of that prior to the 100 day project, but if you're starting from scratch, it absolutely counts because the extra stuff is just as important as the doing, like having a clear space, maybe creating a project box for it or, you know, cleaning off a part of an art table that's dedicated to your 100-day project so you can always go right back to that project. For me, because I'm working on a book, research absolutely counts. My challenge is not to get caught up in the research because it's fun and easy and distracting for me and to actually spend time in the doing. And my plan here for these Fridays is to just show you a little bit of the behind the scenes sort of drafting and thinking. And I was doing a bunch of writing yesterday. And uh, again, there, it's not pretty pictures to share on Instagram, but it's part of this project. Awesome. I love it. Yes, in the organization with the project of painting your lion. Oh, Bonnie, I have to share my, my lion picture with you. I finally um, finished my lion painting as well. And I created a mind map 
for my secret garden project. So some of you will have seen this already. Okay, I'm getting that my OBS disconnected. Okay, I think I'm back. Am I back? Apparently I froze for a minute. If you can hear me, will you let me know in the in the chat? I am back. Okay, that was weird. It just decided to disconnect and reconnect. So let me go ahead and yay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Back with delayed speech. I don't, I shouldn't have delayed speech fixed. Okay. Ah. Uh, internet. So this is the draft of a mind map I created that I shared in my All right. I'm giving it a minute to settle here. Sorry, you guys. What a pain in the patootie. We so rarely have any kind of internet interruptions here. We have great internet. So I apologize. All right. If it happens again, I might just record the video later today. All right. So back to mind maps. So an important part of the book. And what is the book? So the book is going to be a heroine's journey for the second half of life because the yay and boo technology, yay, everyone's back. And um, I love heroes journey stories. As you all know, I love fantasy fiction. I love all the things. But as a 59 year old woman, the journey ahead looks a little different, right? I'm not going off to fight dragons. And if I am, they're inner dragons, not external dragons. And the adventures look different and the quest and what I'm seeking looks a lot different. So I want to design a book that's like a adventure type story where it's very workbooky in nature with lots of fun illustrations and some words. And I have the whole thing mapped out. In fact, I can show you. I've shared this with my people in my creative renaissance program. So you guys are getting a, a sneak peek at the inside of all of this today. So this is the creative renaissance map. It's already emerging and changing after our conversation yesterday about feelings and emotions. I realize that needs to be a, a part of the journey. And so I'm going to need to add that in. I'm going to be adding my creative archetype quiz in here, which I got the first draft of illustrations finished for that this first week. And my husband and I were talking about it, realizing we need to divide this up into sections, but I'm super excited and it's really fun to have it all mapped out because once it's mapped out, then it's easy to keep going on the next step. But a couple of things have happened on my journey to creating this book. One of them is cat drool on my images. I'm like, how did that get all smeared? Very annoying. So, you know, I don't want that in my final book. And I could probably draw a better rocket. And I could practice maybe some different uh, Lego blocks because this one was just that first draft. The content is great and the illustrations need some work. So that's one thing. The second thing is dimensions of the illustrations. And so if you're thinking about illustrating a book, these are some of the things that you have to think about. And what I mean by dimensions is this is a 14 by 17 piece of paper. If I were to scan this in and reduce it, it's not going to be the right dimensions for the book. And we've decided that we want the size of the book to be a 7 inch by 10 inch book. It's a pretty standard size. It might actually be 10 by 7, right, where it's a long skinny book, you know, so it becomes a horizontal book instead of a vertical book. Um, 
This is sitting still on my desk. This is what we did in my Sacred Circles class last night. So pretty. So I am such a Clarissa. I have so many interests. And what I'm loving about YouTube is I get to have fun with all of the interests and in my programs as well. So even if this map had come out perfectly, I wouldn't have been able to reduce this and get it to the right proportions to be readable on a page. And so I know that I have to redraw it. And as I'm recognizing that what I'm doing is simply drafting all of this, it takes the pressure off of that final product. I don't need to get it right the first time. Now I'm lazy. I would love to get it right the first time, but that just isn't gonna happen. So the first thing I did was I did some math, not my favorite thing to do, to figure out the what size paper did I have on hand and why am I not drawing this on a seven by 10 sheet of paper exactly? Because it's too small for mind mapping. It's fine for reducing it, but it felt really challenging to be able to just uh, come in and mind map something this large on a smaller piece of paper. And I didn't have any paper that was 20 inches wide. That felt really big. So basically I did one and a half times the size of the dimension of my book so that when I scan this in and reduce it, it comes out in the right dimensions. It's gonna fit really nicely on my page. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm gonna start with redrawing this mind map and I'll talk a little bit about mind mapping and we'll talk a little bit about core values this morning. So a little bit like yesterday, if you're not quite awake yet, this could, I've got stuff sticking out here. Bear with me for a second. Um, unscrew this. I have a, a holder for my phone for when I'm making shorts and it's in the, right in the way of the camera. So let's see if we can, there we go. That's better. Get that light back on our paper. And uh, a little bit like yesterday, it's gonna be a little bit of lecture and a little bit of art. And if you're not familiar with mind mapping, I've done at least one or maybe a few other videos about it. And I'm using an IdentiPen because it's what I have on the table here. And a lot of times I'll st start a mind map very sketchy and then go back and make it pretty. And my friend Shannon and I, we love reading books together and we're actually reading uh, a book about mind mapping and uh, they call it Mapping Inner Spaces. It's really, really well done. And they talk about drafting maps and it was such a good reminder to me and to you that we don't have to get it right the first time. I had coffee with a lovely artist yesterday. Actually, I am gonna start in pencil, I think, today. And I said, you know, do you sketch? So many artists are avid uh, sketchbookers, right? And they, they sketch out their paintings and she does these gorgeous large works with uh, collage and then these gorgeous transparent acrylic landscape paintings beautiful Amelia Furman F U R M A N she's on Instagram and actually I'll put her name in the in the chat here uh, her work is really beautiful and she's delightful and so talented and uh so you can go check her out on her website or on Instagram and she says she doesn't that it's a very intuitive process for her as well which made me feel good and I feel that way about my big paintings on canvas, but illustration is a whole new thing to me. So I appreciate you coming along for the journey. So this is gonna be draft number two. It's gonna to need to be a little bit smaller. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine arms in each of these arms talk about why core values matter. And I've talked about core values before here and in my newsletter, and I've shared out my core values assessment before, because I think they're, they're so essential to living a really meaningful and for fulfilling life. I think they can really support 
our journey of self-love and self-discovery, which we've been talking about. And it's going to be a big part of the hero's journey, because when we know what it is that we value, it helps us make better decisions and it helps us build things that feel aligned from the inside out, which lends itself to self-confidence. All right, so I have the, the basic design down here now. And I'm going to go ahead and get this centerpiece drawn and talked about. And I'm going to go ahead and do this whole map in black and white. And what I'm deciding is everything's going to get drawn in black and white and then scanned in and color added. And I'm going to have to play with the color. So here's some of the things I'm thinking about for my personal 100 day project that's going to be part of this sort of, you know, experimentation and exploration. So this one has one arm and then one, two, three branches is color and how I'm going to add color. So last night I was playing with just some inexpensive markers to color my characters, which I, I shared the colored images over on Instagram last night. And it was one of the things I noticed. Let's see, we've got one two, three, four, going up here, was that I think the paper is going to matter and the, what I use to color them with. I'm thinking about exploring alcohol markers, uh, maybe some Copics as a way to get some really nice illustrations going. So color feels tricky and a lot of mind maps and sketch noting is done with markers. I love colored pencils. So I'm wondering, could I do all of this with colored pencils? <clears throat> I also see that people are using Procreate a lot for graphic design and book illustration. I don't know Procreate. And I don't really want to have to learn new technology right now. And I want this book to feel hand drawn. So I'm just revisiting my map here. Not very exciting to watch, I know. Carol, that thank you. That's so affirming. I so appreciate that. Carol said the way you verbalize the process of your journey, I'm often able to apply to my own journey, even though it is not the same. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Helps a ton. So when I, I'm going to come back over here and start writing <clears throat> and then I can kind of talk through it. So I'm curious. So up here is vision. So one of the tools that I use in my year long group coaching program, your creative renaissance is what I call the mission, vision and purpose tool. It's a wheel where you look at all the different areas of your life to see what areas feel like they need some tender, loving care. And I find that vision is one that people often struggle with as we get older and careers change or we retire, we lose sight of vision and purpose and goals. So a big part of the work that I do is helping people to reconnect to their vision and core values are really the starting place. Uh, great question, Susan. Um, so core values are a great starting place to reconnect to your vision because it helps you align with what matters and is most important to you. So <clears throat> this is, I did one and a half times today, Susan. So this is, um, actually it's not quite. So this paper is 14 inches wide and then I made it, uh, 10 inches tall. So it's 10 by 14, which when it's reduced will fit with some nice uh, allowance for margin 
in the actual book because remember when if you're designing full page illustrations for any kind of book even if you're hand binding your own book you're always going to lose the margin right so if my margin is here i have to allow for that if my margin is here in the book i have to allow for that as well because my book will have a lot of maps like this i'm actually thinking that my book is going to be uh, a landscape book instead of a vertical book so what i want is to have blank maps that people can fill out so this one is 10 by 14 because that's what i had and that's what will make it work best for uh, my book project great question so how can and let's write core values in here the other thing this is uh reminding me to do is to pay attention to my handwriting, right? My day-to-day -day handwriting is pretty sloppy. But these maps that are all handwritten need to be neat. So in the next iteration of this, I would plan this out a little bit better to make sure that word fits in the center, right? So step one is, this is my core concept of my mind map, and this map is all about mapping why values matter because what happens is maybe we think about values or somewhere in our corporate careers or some personal development workshop we did a core values assessment and then it gets stuck in a drawer and we never think about it but when we keep our core values front and center in our life it makes everything so much easier it makes all of our decision making easier it helps us define our vision it helps us to articulate um, our purpose and why it matters. So the first thing it can do is can help our vision to become clear. And I'm not sure I like that big fat pen. So one of the other things I'm experimenting with is what's the right pen for all of this. And uh, what I love about the IdentiPen is it flows really nice. It writes on any surface and it's what was sitting in front of me, but it's also permanent. I can paint or draw over it and that ink is going to stay put. Um, it helps us to create a meaningful life. And if you're someone that has, it uh, it helps our life to feel um, much more intentional. So that we're directing our life, not being directed by our life, not being pulled along or swayed by others, but really being able to um, choose the direction that we're going. It helps us to define our why. One of my favorite TED Talks and books is uh, Find Your Why by Simon Sinek. And when we know why we're doing something, it's a lot easier to feel committed to it. If we're just interested and curious, it's more challenging and takes a lot more effort but when we're d deeply connected to why something matters to us we can then create our life by design and when we create our life by design we create it the way we want it and I definitely like the smaller pen for these small lines and not this big fat chunky one so good to know and then over here is core values help us to define our purpose. So here I realized I came to another point of decision. I wrote this one top to bottom. So, but this one I'm thinking about writing inside out. So I'm wishing I had wrote this one going in the same direction. So next draft, this is the one I want, right? This is the one I want. Good morning, April. All right, so I'm curious who actively thinks about, knows their core values,
considers their core values. Curious, what are your top couple of core values? I really love how Brene Brown talks about core values. In her book, Dare to Lead, she talks about core values being essential. And I've been doing core values work since way back in 2006 as part of my very first coaching certification. But purpose, but values help us find the foundations, the origin, if you will, of our purpose, and they become the building blocks. Hence my little Legos. And I will definitely go back and add all of the drawings with pencil first and then go over them. Right? Because we don't think about it. We don't talk about it. Uh, it's not, you know, we're not sitting around the dinner table saying, hey, what are your core values? And when I first started studying them, um, and they can provide clues. If you don't know what your purpose is, then you can definitely use your values as clues to discovering purpose. The clues, the, the origins of why something matters to you starts here. So purpose and vision are intimately created. Yeah, I bet, Barbara. Yeah, for sure. So in her book, come down here and do some more drawing. Dare to Lead, Brene Brown suggests that we should only have one value and it's the one we're willing to die for and yes she those are her words it was that extreme and um, at first you're like oh because nobody wants to talk about death and yet her point is I think of it more like what's the one core value that you that drives everything else that you do and and rather than the one you're willing to die for it's the one that you're willing to go to the moon and you know put the flag in the moon for or that you're willing to um you're not willing ever to sacrifice that value so any actions ideas beliefs things people say to you right you have a tight boundary around your stake in that value and I've done a lot of work around this over the years and values change, they shift. If you would have asked me a decade ago, it was all about freedom, it was more important than anything. But the more I think about it and I think about the work I'm doing, the stage of life that I'm in, the stage of life that my parents are in, nothing matters to me more than connection. Connection with myself, connection with my definition of God, spirit, universe, and connection with others. So this arm of core values is all about relationships. A number, probably about 15 years ago, my husband and I were working with a life coach. The kids were getting older, we were both working so hard, and we were feeling a little disconnected from each other. So we started working with a life coach and one of the first things that she had us do was figure out our core values. And um, I had been asking Brad to do this for a long time because I thought it was really important. And of course he poo pooed me. And then it became one of those things that was really so insightful. Um, so relationships, core values improve our connection. So for one thing, it helped us see how part of our attraction uh, to each other and our success in marriage was that we came into our relationship with shared values. But that day we were working, it can help you attract the right relationship into your life. And this is true for individuals, girlfriends, uh, guy friends, romantic partnerships, business relationships, client relationships. We want to attract the people into our life that are aligned with our values, right? Yes, right, Cindy, your values have changed dramatically now that you are retired. Yep, so true. So we're tossing out all these words and going through process with this awesome coach 
named Jenny and he wanted to put fun on the list. Now I was a very different Manette at this point, stressed out, young mom, crazy, stressful business owner. And I'm like, fun isn't a value. And he explained how for him, fun was the experience that he wanted to have on a day-to-day -day basis in his life with his family, with his kids. And it was such a huge personal shift for me and how I looked at my life. And it changed everything and fun is still on the list. It's on our couples list. It's on my personal list. It's on my business list. You know, I had to, it was the, the, the moment where I started to really reconnect to the value of play in my life and to redefine what fun and play meant for me. So core values improve connection. They help us attract the right people. They improve communication and they help us to have more clarity about who do we want to attract in the first place, right? When we know ourselves and our values and the more we speak them out and share them with others. And it's not like I'm sitting around going, um, it was so fun, Barbara. And uh, it's not like, you know, I'm sitting around having conversations with, hey, what are your core values? My top value is connection. But if I sit down to coffee with someone new and they're leaning in and they're sharing stories, there's this instant sense of, oh, we're the same or we're similar, as opposed to you can't get past the how's the weather conversation with someone. You've all felt that when you're meeting new people, right? And so just be mindful and listen for what are the things people are saying that help you know they have shared values. All right, so another great thing about core values is they can help us to relieve stress, right? They're a great source of stress relief. And what I'm learning as I'm going along, so I love recording these conversations and I'm grateful to have an audience to listen. I'm such a verbal processor. I've said that before. It helps me to continue to think and evolve my ideas. So when I sit down to do the writing part of the book, it's all going to be really clear and easy for me. But it helps us relieve stress because we're living a life of alignment. Another way to say alignment is congruence. Meaning my inside desires and beliefs are aligned with the outer expression of who I'm being in the world. It means my head, my heart, and my gut are all on the same page. And when I feel so aligned inside and outside, I say no to things that cause stress. Our core values help us to build inner strength. Revisiting our core values after a stressful time helps us build resilience as well. I love that, Yvonne, never even questioned your core values. You just thought you knew what they should be. I'm so grateful you said that because it's part of um, a big part of the, the work that I do with people one-on-one -on -one and in my programs is to question your values because a lot of times your values end up getting inherited. That word should is so sneaky. And um, we think, right, that our values come from our parents, from, you know, culture, educational system. There's a lot of external influence and a lot of people telling us what we should value, right? Especially if you think about politics, politicians telling you, here's what you should believe and what you should value. Um, oh, thank you, Carol. Me too. I'm really committed to getting it done and I'm starting already. Uh, it's only the end of the first week of the 100 Day Project, but I have a, a deadline for myself that I'd like to 
have copies of this to take to um, a retreat I'm teaching at in May, which is in mid-May. So uh, I got to commit some time and I, I get so torn and I know all my Clarissas will recognize this. I just started this big fox painting. I'm like, I want to paint. I want to write. I need to research. I got to work. And so I'm longing for more time right now to commit to this and being pulled in many other directions, which is what happens. And so if I can come back to my core values and my vision and purpose and why writing this book matters, right, then I will commit the time. And so my core values can help me get projects done. But it's also the basis for our identity, our sense of self, like who am I being, right? Who am I? Helps us feel really solid and grounded in our identity. It informs our behavior all the time, right? If you're someone like me who values connection, then I'm seeking out opportunities to connect with new people. I'm connecting with parents and hubby and kiddos and girlfriends, just checking in, how are you? Or asking for support, hey, I could use some in-person time right now, right? So it can really inform behavior Healthy behavior is maybe a way to say that. It's also the basis for the different choices that we make. I do value freedom and flexibility and adventure. I'm a pretty comfortable risk taker, which is why I have moved so many times in my life because it's exciting for me and it's aligned with my values. And every time that we have moved about every eight to 10 years since we've been married, sometimes way more frequently than that in the early years when we were young and new in our careers, it was always in search of freedom. It was always in search of freedom. Our core values can help us on our journey of self-discovery, help us to know ourselves better. And if you're watching this and thinking, well, how do I figure out what my core values are? If you just go Google core values list, you will find a lot of online lists and free online assessments to help you determine your values. But you can also start to make a list of all the things that matter most to you. And a lot of times we look at core values. In fact, this is what happens when I start talking and mind mapping. Um, I just had an idea for the book. So I love, I have this blank paper over here. I'm gonna go jot down some ideas. So one of the things that I teach is what I call core values in action. Like for me, it's almost in the style of a manifesto. So for me, having a list of words, connection, freedom, adventure, creativity, like they're just words. So there's a couple of things that I encourage people to do along the journey. So I swear the last two days, you guys are definitely getting a glimpse into how my crazy brain works. And so what I encourage people to do is look up the definition because it might surprise you and you might change your mind about the word. Like I was on a um, call for a group program that I participate in and somebody was talking about the word restoration and what the origin of the word is and just really shifted the intention and meaning of how we were using the word in the context of some of the work that we were doing. So look up the definition and, you know, does it still feel aligned? And then three, to turn the word into a sentence. So this is going to be another step in the core values process and, and will have to be a worksheet, you know, in the book of its own, right? First step is look up the definition. Does it still feel aligned? What changes for you when you understand? So like if you go look up the definition of the word integrity, most people say integrity is doing the right thing even when no one is looking. But one of the things about integrity, the root of the word, it's about wholeness, 
right? About wholeness and uh, integration, right? It has the same roots, roots, integers, whole numbers. And so it takes on a whole new, even more meaningful, um, whole more, a, a much deeper meaning is the way I want to say that when I know the definition. And then for me, right, one of my ones I use all the time and one of the things that I live by is connection matters more than anything. As an example. Another one might be something like, if it's not fun, I'm not doing it, right? Or when I was journaling yesterday morning and just brainstorming about the book, some of the things I was asking myself were, how can I make this fun? Like it has to stay fun to keep me engaged because having written a dissertation and three other books, two of them longer, one of them short, a really short book, but what I learned was it takes a lot of commitment. It takes a lot of commitment. Man, we had such a juicy conversation about commitment in our creative renaissance class this week. So core values helps us on our journey to self-discovery to help us find what I call our true self. I'm kind of over the word authentic. It gets used all the time. And what it's trying to say is is the truest version of ourselves, right? We want to be that that truest version of ourselves. And again, it's about integrity, right? We want to be uh, not living a fragmented life, but a whole life. We want to bring all of us to bear on every situation that we approach. Our core values can help us identify patterns of behavior. What are the things we're doing over and over again? Even if we say we don't want to continue that, it helps us to identify patterns and especially um, these can be both, I would say, positive or negative patterns of behavior. And then it can also help us really own our priorities. And I have to learn how to spell. And I would add to this that it helps us set firm boundaries. When we know our values, it becomes easy to set boundaries. And those boundaries can be self-imposed, boundaries around our time, our energy, overgiving, overthinking, procrastination, and it can be boundaries with others, right? It can be boundaries with others as well. So I love the using a mind map like this because it helps me see all the parts. And as I continue to work through this map, I might notice that I just dumped all of my ideas. And in fact, every book that I've written started with a mind map of all of my ideas. And um, it can help me notice where things are out of order. Like, you know, for me, really maybe it, the conversation starts here and goes to here and then goes to here. So my intention with this is to get all the ideas out of my head and onto this piece of paper because then I can sort, I can sift, I can add to it, I can start to interconnect the ideas like are these all different sections in a chapter or are they all part of the the one long chapter does each one of these need its own section i don't know yet but this helps me start to push that out and from a sheerly book writing perspective one of the things that i'm curious about is i want to be able to add illustrations but i also want to have ideas for stories, right? So over here, I to told the story about um, fun with Brad and I. I have another really funny story about my son throwing core values back in my face and saying, you know, I was taking away his core value of freedom. Yeah, it does become like a mantra, right? And I also, when I think about, well, 
how does resilience help with stress relief? So one of the things that needs to get taught over here is I have a great um, exercise called the head, heart, and gut exercise that I would want to teach, teach people. When I think about how does resilience support stress relief, like what's the story that I can tell here, right? We're developing a book and people love story and story becomes the thing that oftentimes is more impactful and effective for teaching than a whole bunch of words. So as I'm working on this, I'm probably going to have some sticky notes on here as I start to think about self-discovery. Like when I think about finding our true self, one uh, of the things that immediately popped into my head was one of my clients whose name will remain anonymous in the book. We'll just call her Sue. And um, Sue took my archetype assessment and came out as a caregiver. And she was mad. She's like, I'm done always being the caregiver and taking care of everyone. When is going to be my turn? And a lot of anger came up around this idea of being a caregiver. But as we went on the journey of self-discovery and really honoring her core values, letting go of all the values that were just shoulds and getting closer and closer to her truest self, she was able to really see how valuable caregiving was and how deeply connected it was to her core value of connection. It was her way of showing love, but she needed to be able to put boundaries around the caregiving, self-imposed boundaries and boundaries with others in her life and her family in order to make peace with the anger and live her truest life, right? So these are so valuable and something so simple is so potent on our journey, right? So I can see being able to uh, tell that story here and have that matter so much. Core values boost self-confidence. And we're almost through the, the draft of this yet. And uh, again, I so appreciate doing this live and sort of thinking through all the different pieces and choices. So it boosts our self-confidence. I'm like, well, I'm missing an arm. No, I'm doing good. Okay, so it boosts our self-confidence. And now I'm writing upside down. So I'm going to take a second and if I go look at it this direction, you know, we want this to be readable. So I'm seeing where I want all of this text really to go in a different direction. And so this text down here is upside down. And that's silly to ask people to like turn a book around in circles. But it's my creative process. So it's fine for thinking. But when it comes to that final illustration, I'm going to have to do something a little bit different different. Okay, so for example, oops, I did draw. Nope. Okay, I have three more to go. I'm getting lost here. Talking too much instead of focusing. And I realized after my ramble yesterday about self-love and connection between emotions and feelings and color, all that needs to be in the book too. And it's not on my map yet, but it needs to be a part of it. So I got to figure out, you know, sometimes I have ideas that I think are random and I get to look at that big giant map and go, does this fit in here? Is it a subset of something or is it actually a, a key important part of this? So how does it help us build confidence? So it becomes an opportunity to develop our leadership skills. Um, the mantra here for me is treat others how you want to be treated.
and the other side of that is uh, treat yourself as kindly as you treat others might be the other side of that. It helps with self-confidence because our core values help us make decisions, helps us make better choices, helps us define our belief system. And again, we could put boundaries, right? Boundaries could go over here as well. And boundaries could go over here as well. And boundaries could definitely go over here as well. So core values help us with self-awareness. And it helps us to understand and go deeper into alignment. So as I go through this a second time, I'm also starting to see where alignment um, with self and our alignment with others. I'm helping, I'm starting to see where I have some repetition. So I'm like, alignment is here and it's also here. Does it need to go in both places? Absolutely, the golden rule, right? The golden rule. So self-knowledge and self-awareness, right? I, again, I've got some repetition here, which I didn't even notice before because I was doing this all on the fly. So as I'm doing this today, I can see where I can simplify the map a lot. And uh, it helps us understand our choices. So confidence, we make better choices. Self-knowledge, we understand the choices we're making. We understand our attitudes and we understand our behaviors. So self-knowledge is the level of the the level of understanding and understanding is different than committing to change. Right? We can understand why we choose or why we have a certain attitude or why we have a, a behavior that maybe we don't love so much. Like it helps us with understanding, but self-knowledge and understanding are not action and choice. So that's when we move all the way back around over here to vision and purpose and why it's so important to know our why. So thank you for playing along. Mind maps are such a valuable tool. Core values are an essential part of our life and the more I talk about this, and remember, I've been studying, teaching, and working with this since 2006. The more I learn, the deeper it goes, the more essential I feel like this becomes. So I think this is draft number three. And I think after this draft, I have a lot more clarity to come along and create the final draft in color, right? And to... Um, get those images down there and I'm committed to having my little character appear throughout this yeah so I'm excited about it it's a great question Susan and I don't know if Susan asked uh, what genre is the the book um, I definitely, I haven't heard the term prescriptive nonfiction yet. I love that, that term. Um, it would probably, from a, a marketing perspective, be in the self-help category. And it's going to be part book, part workbook. Um, I actually found someone else's book that's all about drawing your feelings. It's a beautiful book that gave me um, a great model or template. So oftentimes I will look for a template. And one of the breakthroughs we had is like, how are we going to divide this up into sections? We got to make sure the journey is really clear for people. And another recommendation when you're thinking about a big project, a hundred day project, a book, um, a whole new body of work in your art, is it doesn't ever have to be linear until the very end. And the reason mind maps and visual thinking tools work so well for creatives is because it allows us to visualize information. And when we can see all the information, then we can sort and sift and make decisions. But what I love about this is when I sit down to write a section in the book, I can pick any one of these right now. It's all going to get mushed and mashed and morphed together and sorted at the end. But for now, right, I can say, oh, I had some great thoughts about core values and stress relief today. Or 
I really need to start with how they're the basis for identity because this is step one of the journey when you're choosing the adventure, right? So I can have fun from this perspective of I'm not creating a linear outline and there, there, it takes away the drudgery and the inner rebel in me loves the free flow opportunity to write some here, write some there, knowing it will all come together at some point in the end. And um, so yeah, self-help, I think, adventure journey, workbook, I'm not sure what to call it, but from a marketing perspective on Amazon, it will probably end up in the uh, self-help, self-discovery section. So this part of the market research I have to do is figure out exactly what genre is it going to fit in. All right, my lovelies, happy Friday. Thanks for playing along and uh, I'll see you guys all soon. Have a great rest of your weekend and I will be back Monday morning with our Make Mondays Sacred. Bye everybody.